Earthbed. SPDF Block Elements Good day learners! This is Earthpen. Welcome back to our channel. We are glad that you are tuning in for we will learn today about the SPDF Block Elements. We have already learned before that each element in a periodic table are distinct from each other. And then, these elements were arranged in accordance to their similar number of valence electrons, resulting with the present arrangement of our periodic table. Recall that valence electrons are located at the outermost energy level of an atom, and it is determined from the electron configuration of elements. And since the periodic table was already arranged according to the similar number of valence electrons, we can also easily predict the electron configuration of an element. Let us take a closer look with the periodic table. Notice the collective block divisions. These are the indications of S block, P block, D block, and F block elements. Now, what are these block divisions? Do you still remember our electron configuration lesson? Yes, that's right! The outmost energy level of an element is the basis of our block arrangements. And notice that for all the elements in the S block and P block are representative elements. Then, the elements in the D block are transition metals while the F block contains the inner transition metals or the lanthanide in actinide series of elements, all of which are illustrated in our table. This time, we will proceed in knowing more the elements in every block. First to discuss is none other than the S block elements which comprise of group 1A and group 2A. Since we are talking about the elements in the S block, thus, it is given that the valence electrons of these elements occupy the S orbital in their respective electron configuration. Let us talk about the elements in group 1. These elements are also known as the alkali metals, except hydrogen. These elements are chemically reactive because they only have one valence electron in their S orbital. This means that they can easily lose their electrons during chemical reactions, which makes them the most reactive group of elements, which also explains why they are not found pure in nature. These metals are generally shiny and silvery in appearance in their pure state. They are also characterized as good conductors of heat and electricity, very soft and not so dense materials with low melting point. Because of their reactivity, especially with water or oxygen, they are kept in mineral oil to reduce unwanted spontaneous reactions as terrible as explosions. Let us now proceed to the group 2A elements which are called as alkaline earth metals except helium. These elements have a pair of electrons or two electrons in their outermost energy level, S orbital. They have similar appearance with the group 1 elements, but these elements turn into positive 2 ions when they lose their pair of electrons. They are not found pure in nature, and they are also still very reactive with water and oxygen, but they have a slightly higher melting points compared with group 1. Now, let us proceed in knowing our elements in the P block, which was mentioned earlier as the representative elements together with the S block elements. These elements in P block occupies the S and P orbitals in their electron configurations. These consist of groups 3A to 8A, except helium. P-block elements consist of all non-metal, except for hydrogen and helium, the semi-metal, 
in the post-transition metals. These elements are generally harder and denser than the S-block elements. And all of these elements, except bismuth, are found in the form of compounds in nature. The semi-metal or the metalloids in the P-block elements are the most brittle solids with properties in between metals and non-metals such as electrical conductivity. Also, the group 7A of P-block elements are known as halogens or the most reactive non-metals. They are very reactive with most metals to form salts. That's it for the P-block. Let us now proceed to the D-block elements. D-block elements consist of group 1B until group 8B, which are generally called as transition metals. These metals have a higher and larger energy levels than the S-block and P-block elements. Notice that the D-block elements make up the largest section of the periodic table, which is also located at the center. And since they are transition metals, they have metallic properties such as good electrical conductivity. These elements also have higher melting and boiling points compared to the mentioned elements earlier. They are also less reactive compared to the S-block and P-block elements. This is because, again, of the d-orbital valence electrons are in higher energy levels. By that, they exist as free elements or pure in nature. Last but not the least is the F-block elements. These elements are commonly called as the inner transition elements composed of the lanthanides and actinide series. The F orbital is the orbital with the highest energy level in electron configuration. The lanthanides are composed of elements with atomic number of 57 to 71. These series of metals are often called the rare earth elements, but they are usually called Lanthanides because they all exhibit similar chemical properties with the first element of the group, lanthanum. They are all silvery white metals found in our usual ores but only in small amounts, as small as part per million. The actinide series is also called actinides because these elements have similar chemical properties with the first element of the group, actinium. These are mostly composed of man-made elements except for uranium and thorium. Yes, uranium is part of this group. And yes, it means that all of these elements are also radioactive. Both lanthanides and actinides are all very reactive with the elements in halogen group. And that is all for now. I hope you learned something from us today. Once again, this is Earthbend.